we bless your holy name for all that you have done. For everything that you have done for us in this midst of the year prophetic season. For the souls that you have brought into the kingdom and handed to your church. For amazing testimonies of your faithfulness in our midst. We are grateful. For increase, for multiplication, we are grateful. Thank you for divine visitation. Be thou exalted and glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we appreciate you for what you have programmed and put in store for us for today. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. You said this day is our covenant day of all unrest. Lord, let everyone under the sound of my voice return with the testimony of all unrest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Via your word in this service, save, heal, bless. Lord, let your stamp of blessing be put upon every one of us. Teach us and make us better people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. If you know that God has been good unto you, let your amen show it now. If you can see the goodness of the Lord, even around you, shout, thank you, Jesus. As I was about stepping to, I mean, just there, the pastor in charge of, uh, of uh, uh, our WSM Church in the House project just whispered to me, said we had the highest attendance yesterday. <laughs> Clap louder. Clap louder. We have 246 centers now. Apart from the ones yet to be added. Some have just enlisted. They have not been added at all. And that was from 80 something, whether 84, 85 or whatever, to 246. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. God is ever faithful. Whatever he says is what he delivers. We had overflow in the first service, overflow in the second service. Third service is about overflowing too. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voices to heaven to bless the name of the living God. Appreciate the King of glory. Honor the Lord of lords. Magnify his holy name. Give him praise. Give him praise. Father, we thank you. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed put your hands together for jesus and we may be comfortably seated welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turn around so shall it be in jesus holy name in god's agenda every month is ordained to bear specific fruits Specific what? Fruit. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, he said, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded our fruit every month. Someone say every month. Every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The fruit is for the benefits of God's people to establish and fulfill the plans and purpose of God for his people on the earth here. So it is a new month with brand new fruit. And the fruit this month is to lead you by God into blessing. Somebody shall be led into blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Say it again. 
Please say it the third time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I see this happening for somebody. If you are that somebody, let your amen show you. So all through this month, in our Sunday services, we're going to be looking at this topic, understanding how God leads. Somebody say, does all God still lead? Yes, he does. He does. He does. And in our midweek service, we're going to be looking at another dimension of his direction. You are either being led by God, or you are being led by yourself. The other one is the devil. The devil will never lead anyone here. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, very popular scripture. Many of us can recite that psalm without looking at the Bible. Many of us maybe have opened to that psalm and put it under a pillow to sleep, thinking that putting it like that will make it to work. But God will show us how it will work for us this month. Let's read it together. Psalm 23, verse 1, or 2 to verse 6. Let's go. One, two, go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Two, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Three, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Five, thou preparest a stable in the pres before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Verse six, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Who likes what we just read? I, I love it. I love it. It's wonderful. Amen. And that shall be your experience. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to assure every one of us in this service that God still leads today. He still does what? He still leads today. He still teaches believers the way to go. And when he teaches believers the way to go, we are able to make the most of our lives. Because he said in Isaiah 48, verse 17, he said, I'm the Lord God. We teach thee to profit, not to losses. We teach thee the way, the, the way that thou shouldest go. That means if there is a way that we should go, there are certain ways we should not go. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. So he still leads people today. How do I mean? He has not changed. He will not change because he cannot change. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. Government comes. Government go. But God remains God forever. Polit political ideology, political beliefs, and all those stuff, all those ones, they come and they go. But God remains the same for I'm the Lord, I change. No. So it still leads today. The Lord will lead you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know why we need that? Let me still mention this, it will help us. Your intellect, my intellect, is not good enough. To guide us through in this world. No, it's not. It's not. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He looks good naturally. It was repeated verbatim in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Oh, they say, yeah, that is perfect. It's wonderful. But the moment you put your leg there, there is trouble. You know why? The forces controlling what we see are not seen. Those forces are invisible. You can't study them in any ivory tower. No! 
There is no gadget to study them. If you ever discover any scientific gadget to discover demon, let me know. Do they exist very well? Very well. So we need divine guidance. I tell you we do. I tell you we do. We do. You know, believers keep running around because they want the chief way out. We don't want any sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I can just uh, read something, they tell us in, in a nutshell, don't waste our time. Nutshell. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. It's not about nutshell. I mentioned in the second service that in our generation today, everything is a uh, drive through. Drive what? Because we want it fast. Fast food. Fast marriage. Fast everything. And everything keep this thing, this thing integrating very fast. That shall not be anyone here. So it's better to settle with God. To allow him to lead us. Now, how to assess divine guidance? To build the foundation today, we are looking at three basic points. Number one point is that we must be born again. And we must remain so. Be born again and remain so. At new birth, we are born of the Spirit, according to John chapter 3, verse 6. And God can only guide us through our spirit. Look at this scripture, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. He said, The Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. So, the spirit of someone that is not born again is not alive to God. Man was created in the image of God after his likeness at the beginning. But the moment man fell, he took another image entirely. So that's why nothing can reform man except he comes back to God. For instance, law can never reform anyone. Somebody maybe stole. Maybe it's just $10,000 he stole and they found him guilty and they jailed him. By the time he comes out, he will come and steal 100,000 if he has opportunity. He will go back to that same jail. When he comes back the third time, he will kill somebody. He will go back to... The only factor that can re reform man is God factor. He gets back to God. His spirit is recreated. And God can interact with him lead him this illustration will still help even in this service no matter how you try to train your dog or your cat there are so many things they cannot do for you do you agree with me yes, sir. so many things you can't be discussing some intellectual stuff with your cat or your dog and expect to get a response. In fact, if you are doing that, somebody will think something is wrong with you. Do you agree with me? Yeah. You know why you can't do that? Because it's not in our class of being. Every one of us that will be led by God, we must come to God's class of being. God is a spirit. When we talk about divine guidance, we are talking about the spirit of God leading man. Somebody shall be led. Amen. Remember the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, 
talking about the spirit, the soul. So sum it up this way. Man is essentially a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the body. He lives in his body. The body is the house that he lives. For instance, standing before you, the one that you can see standing before you, he, that you call David, is not the real David. What you are calling David that you take my picture and say, that's David, Pastor David. Mm -mm. That's the house that Pastor David lives. The real David is my spirit. You can't take the picture of my spirit. So that, so, so also nobody can take this picture, the picture of your spirit. That spirit need to be recreated so that we can commune with God successfully. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. At new birth, that's what happens. Number two, we must be clothed with, with meekness. Now, take note of this. Meekness is of the heart. When we say meekness, it is not an outward demonstration of humility. No. Meekness is being teachable. It is being amenable. Being correctable. God teaches the guy, the meek, and he guides the meek. Proverbs, Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse 9. If one already knows what to do, one does not need any guidance from anyone, not even God. You already know what you want to do. Yeah, that's where I want to do my thing. Yeah, that's okay. Go ahead. But remember I said to us before, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man. And the end thereof are the ways of death. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's looking very great. It's looking very good. But it's a trap. You will not fall into trap. And to anyone that may have fallen into trap today, before, I decree your rescue. You know why? Because I don't have the power to make it happen. But I have the authority to make it happen. Let me paint this picture to you. It will help so that we'll be able to focus properly. The policeman that stops you on the way does not, does not have the energy to stand in the front of your car and use his hand to, to push your car to a stop while you are driving. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. He doesn't have that energy. No, no matter the strength, the car will roll over him. But the moment he does like that, if you want to respect yourself, what do you do? You step. You stop. You know why? He has the authority. The state is backing him. So if you mess up before you know it, they will be calling, they will say you did certain you'll be wondering, is it me they are talking about? Just that simple thing. No, it's not simple. It's not simple. Because the one that gave him the authority will now ask you. So I have the delegated authority to cancel everything that is troubling you as you have come today. Amen. And I decree that those things are cancelled. Those wrong steps, they, there shall be supernatural correction. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, we must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Our capacity for spiritual things is limited until we are baptized with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but you, you don't have what it takes to carry them. You don't. You don't. John chapter 16, verse 12 to 15. 
But when he, the spirit of truth is come, he said, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you even things to come. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And everyone that is born again is qualified to be baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Then we can assess dimensions of divine guidance through the Holy Spirit. There's what they call inward witness. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. He said the spirit beareth witness within us that we are children of God. Beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. It can come through whatever means Maybe audible voice even. Because he said to, in uh, Acts chapter 8 verse 29, the Spirit said to Philip, go near and join thyself to that chariot. Because there is an agenda of God that should happen. And you are part of that divine agenda. So that your name will be mentioned forever until Jesus returns. That's what happened to Deacon Philip. He was just a deacon. And God used him to connect to another continent. To spread the gospel by the leading of the spirit. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But remember, Philip had been baptized with the Holy Ghost earlier in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, when all the 120 people in the upper room were baptized. And he was said to be among the seven proposed deacons, full of Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Acts chapter 6. And verse 3, we are, we are for brethren, look among you, seven men of honest report, full of Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this. And who are these? Verse 5. Just jump to verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of Holy Ghost. And who? Philip. So he was full of Holy Ghost. So he could hear when the Holy Spirit sp spoke to him. Let's look at biblical proofs of being led by the Holy Spirit. Told us we are building foundation today. And I see somebody entering into the realm of divine guidance in truth and in deed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if anybody leads himself, uh, he may enjoy it for some time. After a while, trouble will come. If you are led by Satan, ah, yeah, 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 there is serious trouble because it's a trap already. Number one proof is peace. The peace of God that passes all knowledge. Isaiah 48 verse 17 to 18. Isaiah 48 verse 17 to 18. He said, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am thy God, the, I'm thy, thy Lord, I'm the Lord, thy God. We teach thee to profit. We lead thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Verse 18 now. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then are thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. You have been enjoying peace that passes all understanding if you had followed my divine leading. Please note, we are talking about peace like a river. Peace what, like what? It is peace that cannot be explained. It is peace that passes all understanding, that passes all knowledge. Science cannot explain it. Whether social or natural, whatever, cannot explain that kind of peace. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. He said, the peace and the peace of God, which passes all, passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ. No one will be able to explain it, but nobody will be able to deny it. We are not talking about manipulated peace. He 
sisters in the house. Don't manipulate peace. Oh, I have peace about that brother that just came. I have peace. If you manipulate that peace, very shortly, you will soon know that you worked it. Because the same person you said, you say you have peace, very shortly you say, ah, no, 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 God, what are you looking? God said, yes, I wasn't the one that led you into it in the first place. If it is peace from God, you may not be able to explain it, but you will know that you have peace. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You're about entering into a particular business as a believer. That's what we are talking about because we take decisions every day. Decision that you take, every decision you take is either moving you towards the fulfillment of your destiny or moving you away from it. For instance, every one of us, we decided to come to church today. That's true. Somebody may have invited this, nah, 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 nah. I don't know, God, no problem. When the thing that is bigger than that person comes, it may, in some, some cases, it may be too late. So, let God lead you. And even inside turbulence, you'll be enjoying peace. You know there is turbulence in the world right now? Uh, you don't know? Coronavirus? They say another one is Delta variant. Delta. Thank God for Delta airline. <laughs> have, God have mercy on Delta airline. <laughs> Maybe they will soon, soon see Southwest variant. <laughs> oh, American Airlines. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. But in spite of that, you'll be enjoying peace. Amen. Do you know we have peace in this church? Yes. Oh. He told us, he said, even if they fall on sword, they shall not be wounded. Somebody say divine guidance. Divine. That's what we are talking about. The thing was starting, everybody was shivering, shaking, and he already told us that relax, relax. Even if any of your people fall on sword, they shall not be wounded. Has any body been wounded? None. None. And nobody here shall be wounded. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So you enjoy peace that passes all knowledge. If peace is not there, okay, let's check Mark chapter 4, verse 38. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. That's talking about Jesus Christ. And okay, let's start back off to, from verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full of water. Now, and it was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said, Master, cryest thou that we perish? Did they perish? No. He was at peace in the midst of turbulence. That's Jesus Christ. He just rose up and said, peace. And there was calmness everywhere. Somebody will enjoy peace. Yeah. But we must submit ourselves to be guided by God. Stop guiding yourself. Don't be guided by the experts. Especially when it goes against the word of God. Experts in whatever field. I would rather have God guide me than the best lawyer in the United States of America to guide me. Do you agree with me? Yeah. I would rather have the doctor of all doctors to guide me than the best doctor in the United States of America to tell me what to do contrary to what the word has said someone shout hallelujah that's what we are talking about 
Number two, proof. Supernatural favor. Supernatural favor is the cure for all forms of lack. You know, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means I shall not lack. Look at this graphic picture. God sent them, or sent the disciples in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. He said they should go and preach. He still appointed other 70 in Luke chapter 10, verse 1. They should go and preach. And he told them what to do. He said he will be with them. That means he was guiding them. Now, in Luke chapter 22, verse 35, he said, when I send you with that, we sent you without pause or script. Did you lack anything? And they answered, they said, nothing. So if we allow him to lead us, we will enter into lack-free zone of life. We won't lack joy. We won't lack all the things that money cannot buy. And we won't lack the things that money can buy. Someone shout hallelujah. In Psalm 37, verse 19, he said, they shall not be ashamed even in evil time. In the days of famine, he said, they shall be satisfied. That shall be your testimony and my testimony. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How many of us would like to subscribe to divine guidance today? That God just lead me. Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree fresh grace for everyone to apply him or herself to the demands of divine guidance. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Today is our covenant day of all-round rest. All-round rest connotes rest in all areas of life. God is committed to guiding his children if we are committed to following him. He is committed to guiding his children if we are committed to following him. is also committed to giving us rest if only we we'll pay the price because everything by god is co covenant what do i call it covenant covenant in joshua chapter 23 verse 1 joshua chapter 23 and verse 1 joshua he said and it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua was old and stricken in it. God gave them rest on the platform of the covenant. The Lord will give you rest. Amen. He gave Asa and Judah rest round about. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 15 and verse 19. In verse 19, the Bible says there was no more war. Every war in your life shall cease. In the mighty name of Jesus. He gave Jehosh Jehosh sorry, Jehoshaphat and Judah rest round about. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 30. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 30. And Judah stood before the Lord with their little one and their 30. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him Rest out, round about. The Lord will give you rest, round about. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, God has called us unto glory and virtue. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 3. He said, According as his divine power, he has given unto us how many things? All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, through the knowledge, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. That means we need to know something. We need to know something. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says he has blessed us with all blessings. 
all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We need to know how to download it. Do you agree with me? You see something on the internet that is good, you like it, da, 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 da. until you download it, it doesn't become your own. You agree with me? We need to know what to do to download it. Somebody shall download all unrest today. Amen. Now, quickly, how to enjoy the reality of all unrest? Number one, one must remain a committed soul winner. A committed what? Soul winner. The, the only assignment Jesus first mentioned when he resurrected, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Christian faith is not to be hidden in ourselves. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't like, no, no, I don't like to trouble anybody. I don't like to trouble anybody. I like to keep myself. No, religion is a, is a personal thing. It's not, Christianity is not religion. No. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. He said, go ye into the world. Go and preach. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And as you are doing that, I'm with you always. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Don't keep it. Go. And you know what happens when we are committed, so when we become committed soul winners? Every soul winner is a distributor of peace. Somebody say distributor of peace. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of 15 and 16, okay, of the gospel of peace. 16 now. Above all, now you now take the shield of faith, where which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. As you are Spreading the gospel, you are spreading peace. How do I know? Luke chapter 5, chapter 10, verse 5 to 6. Is there any house you first enter? Say unto that house, Peace be unto this house. And if the son of peace is there, he said, The peace will remain. If, if his son is not there, he said, The peace will follow you, shall turn to you again. On a lighter moment, we went to do evangelism somewhere, and they said, oh yeah, live right now. I said, okay, no problem. The one that sent us, he told us to go everywhere. But you have told us to live now. We will leave. He said, when we are leaving, we should shake the dust of our... So I said, <laughs> jokingly. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not really saying you should not do, but you know, the authority. I said, I know the authority. Praise the living Jesus. <laughs> So, you have become a distributor of peace. I hear this. No one lacks what he gives. People only lack what they keep. That was God's servant's statement. As you are distributing peace, God said, whatever good you make happen, I will make happen to you. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 8. God will make good things happen to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, one must remain in love with God, in truth and in deed. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, My little children, don't love in word, though, but I want you to love in truth and in deed. Not just in word and in tongue. Oh, I love you, love. I love you. You know, the proof of our love for God, first of all, is obedience to him. If we are not obeying him, we are not loving him. You cannot love God in truth and in deed and not love everything about him. You will love his word. You will love his instruction. You will love his correction. You will even love his reproof. You will love everything about him. Everything. Everything. 
Imagine a husband talking to the wife. I love you so much. I love you so much. But I don't like this, your legs. Is that, is that a correct statement? <laughs> I don't like this, your head. But I love you so much. You must love everything about her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Love in truth and in deed. In Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, there is a lover of God there. He said, praise ye the Lord. Bless is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. He just excited in the commandment of God. He said, his seed shall be mighty upon her. The generation of the heart of the, of the, ble of the upright shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be in the house of that person. That shall be you. That shall be you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 21, Jesus said, anyone that keeps my commandment is the one that loves me. Number three, one must enter into covenant to 